I recently got access to ChatGPT Vision, which allows you to upload images and it can interact with them. Now being a UI UX designer, I wanted to see just how well it could take these layouts, starting with a very simple card, then a list that's also responsive, and an actual full layout that is also responsive as well. I'm even going to ask it to make this countdown section function with JavaScript. Now the big question is, will this put front-end developers out of a job? Let's find out. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, so let's see if ChatGPT can actually create this very simple layout as a first try. So I use my print screen tool just to get a, a copy um, of exactly what's happening here. And then I'm gonna go back to ChatGPT4. You have to make sure that you have this thing right here, that little icon uh, to attach images, or you can just paste it in, Control V. And you can see, there we go. So the first prompt that I'm going to issue to this is right here. So make this card layout with HTML and CSS, make the topography fluid with clamp, along with the padding on the inside of the card. So we're giving it a little bit of direction, not much. So let's go ahead and see what happens. All right, so as you can see, I, it's doing a good job here, if I zoom up, of translating the type that's found in the image itself, which is quite impressive. This is exactly the markup that I would use so far, even though it's a simple example, uh, it looks pretty solid. So. What I'll do is copy this code, and while this is running, I, I'll go ahead and paste this in blank index.html that I have in Visual Studio Code. There it is, so you can see it says styles.css. I already have a styles.css, which is empty. I'm gonna save that, and we're gonna go back and let this run. Now you can see it says um, air H1, it's doing a font size of clamp, which I did ask for, although it's using pixels, which I thought's a little strange, but I no big deal. You could actually guide it further if you wanted to use something like REMS. Uh, but this is, all looks pretty decent here in terms of uh, you know execution. It did add a box shadow, but let's see what this looks like. Let's copy the code. We're gonna go back here to Visual Studio Code in our styles.css, paste that in, save it, and then right click, open with live server, and there we go. This is the fancy card that it came up with. And again, just to show you the reference image in Figma, it this is the actual design that I had. So the, the background color is Ace DC, okay, something like that. I'm not sure if it used the same background color, it did not. So it didn't really accurately in the best manner, um, you know, translate this design. So if I, scale this in, it also, it did use, okay, so the clamp, we, we know it used it, and it did a pretty decent job. It kept it center, horizontally and vertically, I'm assuming with Flexbox, um, but it, it's not a perfect representation uh, of the design provided. Very interesting results. Now, for the next one, I have something a little bit more elaborate. We have a list of items right here, and then we also, I'm going to see, I haven't tried it yet, I'm gonna see if it works uh, by also providing a responsive mobile version of the same layout. I have no clue if this is gonna work, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. And that simply says, I am providing you with a UI design that contains a layout for a desktop and mobile. It's a repeating list of card information. Use media queries to ensure that on mobile that the design adapts as shown in the mobile layout provided or something like that. So I gave it a little bit more guidance this time. Let's see what it comes up with. Interesting that this time it decided to do inline CSS within the actual same HTML document, which is fine. It still drives the point home. Again, if we wanted to negate this, we would really provide it with more specific detailed information in the prompts. But up for now, that's fine. And we'll see what it comes up with. Also notice in mobile styles right here that it's printing out, it's using max width. So it's not a mobile first approach that it's using. Again. We would provide that in the prompts if we wanted to have a true mobile first where it uses the min width option uh, for responsive design. All right, so here is the actual result. So we're just gonna copy this. As you can see, it didn't do three cards, but it said just add more cards as needed. So I'm gonna go back here. We're gonna take this and just simply paste this. Uh, we'll add a, a third one just to make it match up with the actual design of Figma. Here we go, let's check it out. All right, oh, come on. 
That was weak. All right. So, <laughs> uh, it has the actual structure pretty much close and correct with what we have I in, in the Figma layout, but I really want to try to poke and prod at it a little bit more to see if it can match up the colors and the general aesthetic as found in the images. But let's see if it is responsive though. So, okay, that's responsive and that's pretty much perfectly what I envisioned for the responsive portion. It just kind of ignored the general styling and colors of everything. So let's see if we can kind of steer it in the right direction with a follow-up prompt and have it revise what we truly want. So if I come back to our ChatGPT, I'm gonna come back in here and I'm just gonna simply ask it, I please modify the CSS only so that the colors accurately match the designs and colors shown in the images provided. All right, notice it does decide, oh no, it errored, but it did decide to add its own border for better contrast, which is interesting because now it's playing the, the role of UI design. So the, these prompts can be constructed a little bit better. Uh, I'm gonna have to regenerate this because there is an error, unfortunately. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and copy this now. We're gonna go back. I'm gonna paste, copy and just paste over all the previous styles. We're gonna save, go back and, hmm. That's kind of strange because it really doesn't match the original design all that well, even after asking it to try to match the colors up for me. I mean, this is kind of hard to see. That's not what I designed specifically, which it wouldn't be a big deal to go in and update the colors yourself. But if we see, if I go to back to Figma, this is what I actually chose. So, you know, if I wanted it to have the body background color be exactly matching what I have, it should be DCC1AD as a hex code and I could just provide that in the prompt itself. Um, but for the most part, it does get it structurally correct uh, and, it, and it did what I wanted to do, but aesthetically, it's pretty far off. All right, here is the final design, which is probably the most complex design. I'm actually gonna ask it to utilize JavaScript to make these actually function down here. I have no clue how it will do. There is a photograph here, so I'm not expecting it to, to provide me with a photograph. Um, I'll probably tell it to, to give me a placeholder image element and I can just update it myself. Um, and then there's also a responsive version right here where it just collapses these uh, three different areas into uh, rows, essentially. So let's see if we can get this one rocking. All right, and here's my prompt, which I made uh, a little bit more elaborate. Just to go over it real quickly, use the CSS grid to create the layout provided to make it responsive as shown. Also include JavaScript to make an automatic countdown based on the three days, 14 hours, five minutes, blah, blah, blah. Information included in the design, it should count down from that date. So each of the second block that says, I 14 seconds will count down and the rest of the information, blah, blah, blah. You know, you get it. Utilize fluid typography and white space. Uh, the title, the H1 element, is the font Playfair Display. Please import this and the rest of the type is Poppins. Utilize minimum width media queries to make it a mobile first responsive design and also ensure that the colors, margin, and padding all match the design well. So that's a more elaborate approach for initial prompt. Let's see how it does. All right, so here is the JavaScript code now that we've asked it to actually relate to the, C the HTML that we already have. Um, so I'm gonna create a script.js, paste that in. It is referenced down here, a script.js. <laughs> and here we go, I have no clue. Uh, actually, before I do that, I do want to use the background image. So in our styles.css, there's a reference to it here. So just to reference that, we back out, go into uh, the root, bg.jpg. All right, so that is the uh, ocean graphic. Here we go. This is gonna be scary, I think. I don't think it's gonna look anything like our original design. So the original design, before I show you, is this right here on desktop, and this is kind of tablet mobile. Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> what is that? Oh boy. So unless my prompt engineering really sucks, this unfortunately 
isn't the most ideal result. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can imagine maybe there's a better prompt that I could issue to make it align more closely, but this is this is nowhere near close to the original design. So um, one thing that is working is this countdown. So that actually works. Let's see if the minutes adjust when seconds go to zero. Do you want? Yep, that, it actually works. So that part works. But the rest of the layout was not accurate at all. So let me know what you think. I think that personally, um, unless I'm screwing up the prompt and you know there's, there's some special secret sauce prompt that will really make it accurately translate these designs, um, I'd have to say at best, this is just a fun thing to play around with. I, it's not something that you can use to like really rely on uh, for production work. You could utilize it if you're brand new and you're just trying to figure out how things work and it can give you some ideas. But the ideas it gives you, maybe they're not the best way anyways. So uh, it is impressive that it can extract the type and it can extract some colors and do well. I think it can only do decently with simple things like that card at the beginning. But who knows, uh, they, they are always fine tuning these models and they get better and better. But at this point in time, from what I see, it's really just a novelty at best. All right, everybody, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.